I've got Nick Jones here. He's a great mate of mine. Uh, I've known him for so many years. And what Nick doesn't realise, and we're just talking off camera, that I said, mate, I've been watching your content and you're helping so many people. And he said, I hope so. I said, no, Nick, if you're helping me, you're helping everyone. I mean, that's everyone in the world. One thing, guys, I want to say about Nick is Nick used to do a lot of seminars. He still does. He's so well-spoken. He speaks the truth. He has absolute empathy and compassion to everyone that he comes in contact with. He remembers faces. And every time he greets you, he re greets you with this warmth where you feel like, wow, I, I feel that. And I'm so happy to have him here. And I've been watching his podcast. He's an absolute amazing family man. He looks unbelievable. How old are you? In his late 40s? <laughs> you know, we're in Sydney. Some people know Mount Druitt. Yeah. About as old as Mount Druitt. I'm Bell really old. Shit, I'm really, there you go. And I'm he's really still old. in great shape. Nick, welcome to Titan Muscle, Thank you, mate. mate. Thank you, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. For those that don't know you, tell us a little bit about Nick and what Nick does. Oh, Nick does whatever it takes, Mets. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I like it. I like that's it. That's what Nick does. That's why um, we along so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you do. You have. You have to. So, I mean, it depends how far back we want to go. You know, I'm English. I was born. My dad's Welsh. Mum's English. Mm. We moved to Australia when I was a baby. I grew up in Adelaide, basically. Yeah. Um, I was a pretty troubled kid. My folks split oh, yeah. when I was very young. Oh, I was yeah. bad, Mets. Yeah, there's a lot you don't know about me. Let's go, let's you only go know there. the let's good go stuff. There. No, let's go there. You want to go, go there? there? No, let's go there, man. So, you know, if there's, and I guess it's more common these days for children to have single parents and, and live in broken homes. It's yeah. more common. Back when it happened in my day, I think I was probably the only kid in my class, in, in, in my school, year after year, that only had mum around, you know, dad wasn't around. So they split when I was six. Had a, had a massive emotional impact on me that I had to work through as years went on because that, um, you know, that responsibility I took as a six year old and the emotional pain um, that I felt and then I guess all the challenges with only having one parent around, um, that manifested in a lot of anger. So Mets, in my teenage years, I got put up on four assault charges. I was a bad kid. This is high school. I was a bad kid as a teenager. Suspended? Well, it wasn't at school. It was. It would be out yeah, at parties, okay. out at parties, and I was going to nightclubs yeah. early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're getting the dark side of the <laughs> folks, Let me tell you. Well, and, and, and this is the thing, Nick. This is what I like about this whole story. Because mm. if you, and we're going to get context of who you are now. Yeah. Guys, listen to this really carefully because this matters. Because you're going to see the man he was to the man he is. Mm. Keep going, Nick. Okay. Um. So. So, I, yeah, that they were all juvenile assault charges, the four, and, and the fifth one was when I just turned 18. So, so to be honest, to cut a long story short, and I could talk a lot about it, at 18 years of age, I was uh, convicted of assault, occasioning grievous bodily harm. I whacked this guy. It was a short story. I, I belted him in the mouth and he lost his teeth. And, and, um, and back then, I guess there was a lot of violence. I saw a lot of violence. I saw it in my own home. I experienced it in my own home. And I think, you know, we lived in a time back then, it was, you know, political correctness wasn't at the forefront of so much, mm. you know, so much communication and, and there wasn't so much front. There was a lot of, I just witnessed a lot of violence. It was natural to me yeah. to if someone did the wrong thing by you to, yeah. to belt them, you know, yeah. and, yeah. Um, but it was always when I'd drink. So what was inside of me would come out when okay. I'd drink, right? Yeah. So you drink and it's like squeezing an orange. Mm -hmm. The juice comes out yeah, and yeah. this anger would come out. So it got me in a lot of trouble. But the beauty of that getting me in trouble and that the beauty of the hardships that I went through and that emotional stuff that I went through, it forced me. And I, I, mm. when I was in court, I got this conviction and yeah. I got, I got um, 12 months imprisonment. Wow. I nearly passed out in the stand. I was 18 years old. Wow. I'd started training. Yeah. I'd started training. So I had good little physique, yeah. fresh face, good looking <laughs> kid, you know. You imagine. But you had the, the judge, model looks, you always had the model Right, looks. dude. So I nearly passed out in the stand in court. Wow. I nearly passed out and uh, my, my mum burst into tears and she was with her friend and his head just fell into his hands. And, and, um, but then the judge, he did it on purpose, the judge. I had six references from members of the community that had a high standing that knew me. Yeah. They knew I was a good kid. They knew the good in me. Yeah, yeah. And they just knew I was a bit troubled. So I had these great references. The judge read every single one of them. Mm -hmm. So he's convicted me uh, to 12 month sentence. Yeah. And he left it and then he said, but on a period of good behavior for oh, 18 wow. months. So I got this good behavior bond yeah. for 18 months. And 
The funny thing was, maybe three months before I went to court, my solicitor that I was seeing said to me, be prepared, you may do time. Mm. And wow. I'm like, what do you mean do time? I just belted a guy in the mouth because blah, 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 you know, whatever happened. And, and he goes, Nick, it's your fifth assault charge. If they bring up your four juveniles, it's, it's not going to be good. You're a menace to society. Yeah. Be prepared. And I want you to pay me before we go to court. Otherwise, if you go inside, you won't pay me. So that's when I thought, shit, this, this is serious, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I was luckily, lucky enough to be blessed with a couple of little angels that were at the gym. Mm. So it was, I, I owe so much to bodybuilding meds yeah, because yeah, bodybuilding yeah. saved me for a number of reasons. So a couple of my friends, one of them was a great massage therapist and he, he, he sort of exposed me to metaphysics and quantum physics and new age thinking. Wow. And then I read in wow. a muscle magazine of all places, I was, I, started, I was working the oil field two weeks on, two weeks off. Mm. And the reason I got that job was my girlfriend's father at the time was the manager. Yeah. He wanted me away from his daughter. Oh, so he wow. gave me a job in the, in the middle of the desert, in the oil yeah, field, yeah, right? Yeah, to, yeah. To, to, to get me away from his daughter, yeah. which worked. Yeah. It, it worked. <laughs> but the beautiful thing for me was I'm out in the middle of the desert yeah. and you get plenty of time yeah. in such peace and such quiet yeah. with no distraction. Yeah. You have to start going inside. Okay. You just do. You yeah, have to. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no, you don't get mesmerized by the activity of the world mm -hmm. and the goings on of the mm -hmm. world. You know, mm -hmm. so I was in the middle of the desert, um, and I read an article in a muscle magazine. Mm -hmm. Muscle bodybuilding, yeah, such muscle a magazine. such a beautiful yeah, sport, right? Yeah. And there's such a great positive side to bodybuilding. Yeah. There's a dark side, yeah, yeah, but there's this light yeah. side. And yeah. Frank Zane, you know Frank yeah, yeah, Zane, I love Frank right? Zane, so he was yeah, one of my yeah, favorite yeah, bodybuilders. Yeah, the Frank. reason Frank Zane was my favorite bodybuilder, Mets, was because. I read this article by Frank Zane on meditation. Yeah, oh wow. It was on okay, meditation. Yeah. So Frank Zane, he was an extreme physical specimen, yeah, yeah. right? Beautiful physique. Yeah. He was Mr. Olympia mm. in the late 70s, three years yeah. in a row. So for a man to have that sort of a physique, but he had a degree in experimental psychology. So he's yeah. a very intellectual man. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and then he was heavily into Zen Buddhism. So he's a very spiritual wow. man. So that's what yeah. impressed me so much about yeah. Frank Zane. I, I read this article on meditation. I did a session of meditation in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah. Just focusing on my breaths, counting one to 10, yeah. the air going in and out of my nose. Yeah, yeah. Very simple yeah. technique. Yeah. And that's all it has to be. Yeah. When I sat in this meditation for, I don't know how long, 10, 15, 20 minutes, I'm not sure I lost track of time, but I went deep. Mm. I went deep the first time. As soon as I opened my eyes, the world looked different to me. Wow. It looked different. Yeah. And when I went to court, I said to my solicitor, you know, I've been meditating, I'm changed, I'm, I'm not violent anymore, I'm working on this stuff, I'm, I'm doing these rebirthing mm. techniques, and I've been exposed to these, yeah. these metaphysics and quantum <laughs> physics, and I'm getting, I'm getting very, I'm getting very yeah. good at, at meditation. Mm. And he said to me, he goes, well, Nick, that's good, because you'll get lots of time to meditate in jail. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said to me. And again, I thought, dude, this guy's serious. So I'm not laughing because, I mean, I'm, I'm laughing because of what he, the way he's said. Yeah, yeah, oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I, I laugh, laugh about it now. I laugh now, yeah, yeah. Oh, very much so. So, yeah. you know, my background is probably, and, and I grew up in housing commission, single parent, basically. So that's a bit about my yeah. background, yeah, yeah. you know? And so my schooling, my education, I was... I only went to school to eat my lunch yeah, yeah. and do sport. I love PE yeah, and I loved yeah. eating my lunch. Yeah. So I was not a great student. Potentially I could have been, mm. I, I believe potentially I could have been yeah. had I've applied myself and been focused yeah. and had that support yeah, yeah. and direction. But um, so that was my background yeah, yeah. In, in growing up. And, yeah. um, and I was only talking about it to a friend the other day my martial arts instructor, my Arakan instructor. Yeah, because you do a lot of martial arts. I do a lot of martial arts and is, now. Is there, is there an element of meditation within that? Oh, very much so, yeah. you know, and there is in weight training too, yeah, if, yeah, you course, yeah, if you approach it that way. If you approach it that way, yeah, that's yeah. right. When so, you stay really focused and true to the set. In the moment. In the moment. Yeah. In, in the, the moment. Red, yep. In the negative, in, in the, the positive, yeah, in the static, when right, you're just yeah. feeling the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And you can go, you know, how deep can you go? How deep can you focus on that working muscle? Can you get your consciousness into every Fiber, yeah. you know, can yeah. you get into every cell? So, yeah. and it depends, you can approach that. it like that, yeah, right? That. Yeah. Which, yeah, which yeah. I do, yeah. I, I like to approach yeah, my body yeah, yeah. that way and have done for many years. So, yeah. yeah, with the martial arts, with the Arakan, you've got to be present, you've yeah, got to be yeah. in the moment. Yeah, yeah. Getting punched in the face is not much fun, still, mate. So, you've got to, you've got to be good with your defense. Still, and, they still get you in the face, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we yeah. don't train with gloves, <laughs> but not hard. You don't really yeah. hit that hard when yeah. we spar, we don't, yeah. we don't spar hard. It's not, it's you know, what's 
what's so good for me when I when I listen to this, and I and I, I went to a seminar with Deepak Chopra talking about quantum yeah, physics. Yeah, same, same. You know what I mean? We, and, with Deepak Chopra, Stuart Wilde, um, Wayne Dyer, and another guy. Wayne Dyer is unbelievable. He's, he's gone God bless his soul. Yeah, God bless you know him. I mean? yeah. He's just he's amazing. Great teachers. Just, just unbelievable teachers. teachers. You know, I think there was a quote with Wayne Dyer: "Change the way that you look at things, and the way you look at things will change." Yeah, exactly. And when I look at where you've told me you've come from mm-hmm. and to where you are, you started seeing the world differently. Very much so. And very much so. Obviously, obviously, this was born because of that. Gentech. Gentech, yeah. So, yeah, Gentech's part of the story, you know. Um, I guess how Gentech. Tell us a little bit about how that, this be- Gentech became part of you. How Gentech came about, you know, I, I was into my bodybuilding. Um, I competed as a natural bodybuilder in the early days. It was AMBF, yeah. which then became the INBA, yeah. which now is the ICM. Yeah. So, I competed with those guys in their very first shows yeah. in Adelaide. Did quite well. Um, won a, a junior and open title yeah. in the same show. I then went and won the junior nationals with yeah. the AMBF. Um, um, so, again, I. And, and be, being a natural bodybuilder, I looked more and more and more into supplementation. Mm. Um, and you know, the more I looked into it and doing it properly, mm. the the belief and and the results came. Yeah, yeah. Um, I worked for a great Australian company called Masashi, mm. but I was working for Masashi when Tim Hall, the original owner, okay. when he owned it, and he was a very intelligent man. Yeah. I think his mum was a herbalist. That was a businessman, but his mum was just a to give context of Masashi. Yeah, they were the biggest brand in Australia for they, a long time, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, and they were the best amino acid company. Yeah. I mean, they were 25 years ahead of the game, they yeah. were doing powdered mm. free form amino acids yeah. back in '83. They wow. started wow. right in '83, yeah. so he was like 25 years ahead of the game, man. Way ahead, yeah, and his 100%. formulations. His formulations were done by Dr. Barry Finnan, mm-hmm. a head lecturer at one of the big unis in, in Victoria. So Barry Finnan, he, he, he had a, a formulation for detoxing the liver. He had the branch chains for recovery. He, they had a product, their arousal, Chem the Arousal, the pre-workout I that product. One. I yeah, the green, that. the green yeah, that yeah, tasted yeah. terrible, but that, yeah. that was arginine, methionine, and glycine. And wow. they're, they're the three aminos we yeah. use yeah. to synthesize creatine wow. in the liver. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so there was so much science behind what he was doing, yet there wasn't a lot of science keeping up with high-level athletes, yeah. elite you know, elite yeah, level bodybuilders yeah. and strength training athletes in our yeah. supplementation protocols. Yeah. So I was a big believer in supplementation. Mm. Um, I finished working for Masashi, um, and I've got to say, it's the first job I really loved. Wow, yeah. Because yeah. I was doing what I was passionate yeah, about, yeah. and I was, you know, yeah. touch what I was quite good at it. Yeah. I was quite good at it, because it was, wasn't about selling, I wasn't a good salesman, yeah. um, but I was a good educator of yeah, the product, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I understood the science behind yeah. it, and I loved them, they yeah. worked. Yeah. They worked. The, their company was sold to Nestle in 2006, and this, everything's changed. Obviously, it's not it's not yeah. what it used to be. It's yeah. a very different brand, yeah. and, and I'm sure yeah. they'll tell you it's a different brand, different model. Yeah. Um, so really, that's where my love of supplementation mm. came from. Mm. And Masashi had all of the 22 singular amino acids in their range. Yeah. Yeah. So I was able then to try different combinations mm. at different times. Yeah. Was able to to stack those aminos with carbohydrates at certain times. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of stuff that I was able to do yeah. because I had uh, access to all these ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really enjoyed that man. Yeah. So so my love of supplementation um, just grew more yeah, and more yeah. and more as, as, yeah. I, as I had access yeah. to Mas- Masashi yeah. and they sponsored me and I worked for them. And um, when I finished with them in 99, mm-hmm. um, I finished with them in 99, and that's ultimately when I started Gentech. Mm. Only because I didn't, you know, it was looking back, it was really my fault. Yeah. But me and Tim told each other where to go. We had a big oh, argument really? over the phone. Yeah, yeah. We had a big argument over the phone, and I've still got that fire in me, yeah, Nets, yeah. you know. So I told him where to go, and he told me where still to go. Got that Adelaide fire in yeah, I still got the fire in I still got it. It's what made me a good yeah. bodybuilder, you know. And you need it a does, bit yeah. of that in you. I, I, I was the same, but that was my upbringing. I was an angry kid that yeah. always had fights in high school and they got trouble got suspended right um, and, and it was kind of normal back then it was normal because growing up with two older brothers 10 years older than me that's what they done yes and, and, and you that, probably but, copped but, it from uh, them a bit did you did you cop it from your brothers i did if that? i lost the fight yeah okay if i lost the fight okay. i copped it from yes but it goes to show bodybuilding is a sport for that anger yes oh, and yeah. to be transferred in another area oh, right yeah. and i think we got it mm. and i think a lot of people 
don't get it, mm. but a lot of people do get it as well. Yes. And it changes the person that you become. Mm. And when you were talking about this deep, deep connection that you needed to have, that visceral connection, mm -hmm. everything that I see that you do in your life, and we were talking off camera before about being Nick Jones, being Mets. Mm -hmm. And when we look at who we are, we're as special as anyone else because there's only one of us. Mm. And if True. you look at our stories, no story is the same. No, no. Do you know what I mean? And, and even if they're similar, your story is still going to be unique because of the way that you processed it. Yeah. No one can yeah. process your story and, 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 and each moment and this reality the way that you do. 100%. No one processes it the same as you. The only thing that you changes is, is our awareness to that story and what significance it had on us. Yes. And then how we, how we absorb that and what we do with it. Mm. What impact yes. did it have? Yes. And how can we now serve the world? What I see. So that's a big awareness. You're that's talking a big about awareness. a big step. Yeah, yeah. Big it's leap. a big step. Big yeah. Leap. So every time I go, and I've heard this quote a million times, and I think it comes from Tony Robbins life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Yes. So you take away yes. this victim mentality, yes. and you go, that's the this key. is happening now that's the for key. me. Yes. And if I look back at your life and I never knew that about you because I go, this guy is so intellectual. He must have studied at some Harvard University, yeah. right? <laughs> no, no, right? But, but if I look at everything, it was meant to happen in the way it happened. Exactly. Otherwise, you wouldn't be the person you are today. Exactly, man. Do you, do you believe in that with everything that happens to everyone? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And that's why, and mate, that's why when times are tough and, and you're struggling, and, and, and I still do, because mm. again, people go, oh, you know, you... You've got it together. I've seen that and quite actually. I've seen Jeff, you know, goes, Oh, yeah, you got it together. Yeah, Jeff Jowell said that to me in the gym. Yeah, Jeff Jowell said that to me in the gym. Tell me about that. Yeah, so it's, it, you know, we all have struggles, you know, no matter what. You, yeah. you, you look at guys like, we look at guys, or I look at a guy like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. We grew up with him, him yeah. and Arnold being the yeah. ultimate action heroes. Yeah. And, yeah. and Stallone's multi, multi millionaire. Yeah. He's doing what he loves. He's got that creative side where he yeah. writes yeah. all of his own scripts and then he plays the leading man. And, you know, he's got all those toys and yeah. he's, got, he's got a beautiful family. And you look at him and go, that guy's got it together. Yeah. Like he's financially secure. Yeah. But when you really look at it, I'm pretty sure that he had a son and his son passed away many years ago. Yeah, right? and they're saying whether it was suicide or was it... Yeah, was it know, or was it all, or... Well, they said, was it the abandoned child as well? Right. You know what I mean? Were, yeah. And it was, it was oh, actually... Oh, really? Was actually, I don't know that much about it. Tell me. Well, it's funny because th that was the son in Rocky V. Oh. I was playing the role, right? Right. And, and what happened was... Was it really? Yeah, yeah. It was a son in Rocky Five. No. So so when you but look he, at that... He gave that speech to about it's not all sunshine and rainbows. That's right. No, no, no. You know, the one when he was fighting in the street? Oh, Tommy Gunn. Tommy yeah, Gunn. when he loses... Gunn. When he, when he, that was the not so good Tommy Gunn, that wasn't the good Rocky. Yes. And he, lo he has that street fight, that young kid that yes. wears the earring. Yes, That's yes. his son. That's his real son in real life. Wow. So, you know, when I when I seen that and I heard that, like me and you have perspective. How do you bury a kid? You know? How do you bury a kid? And and when the media is coming out and saying it was your fault, right? And and you go to yourself like then like put yourself in his shoes and we think he's got it all together. Yeah. We used to look up to Rocky. We yeah. wanted to be him. Yes. His body. You know, in Rocky IV, he looked unbelievable. Yes, yeah. And then you look at the perspective. You take perspective in that. Mm. Going, okay, he's got an amazing life. That's we feel. Yes. But then when we look at that, well, how does he process that? And yeah, we like, think, we think it's, he's got it easy now. He 100%. sits back now and got it easy. Do they? He's not no. got it easy. And I think he was nearly broke as well. He went he got yeah, into yeah. Bollywood to rebuild himself. Yeah, he did 100%. Some yeah, stuff he, had in to, he had to come back. And, and, and so when people look at the highlight reels of others... And yes. Possibly yours. Or Which mine. is their social media life. That's, That's their right, highlight reel. A distorted version too. And, and, and what they can't process is how we process things. Mm. All right. Things happen to us. Mm. And this is what I say to people like, you've got your lane, right? Your lane is your visceral connection with you. That's mm -hmm. who you are. Mm -hmm. That's your identity. Yes. You're going to get pulled from these two ends, mm -hmm. right? Your center is your state of calmness. Yes. And when you look at meditation, that's who you are, yes. right? The two ends that you're gonna get pulled from is either isolation, you're isolated because you feel like you're yes, alone, you're the only person yes. in the world yes. it's happening to. Yes. Overexposure is I'm exposed now, everyone's judging me. Yes. What how do I process this? Yes. Your center is where you meditate. It's where you, who you are. Your true self. Right? Your true self. Mets, right? Yes. 
if I know I'm that person and I'm serving the people, mm. well, I should be confident in that. Yes. Because if I'm living my true self, I should be happy with who I am. Yes. I'm always going to get pulled from these two external ends. Of course. Always. Of course. Now, isolation may seem negative. Exposure may seem negative. But they're also positive. To draw from both. Because when you're doing your videos and I'm watching you, you're exposing me to new thoughts. Mm. Okay? Yes. When I'm isolated, I need my time to myself. Yes. Right? Yes. And we all do. So We then, all do. So, yeah. So then if you have a look at it, it's all one. Right? Mm -hmm. If you really, really look at it, if you really have good perspective, yes. it's all one. Yes. But the center is the state of calmness. And you can always go back there if you know who you are. Yes. Right? And for me, that's not easy to do. Mm. And that comes with time. Yes. And you've got to go through failures. You've got to go through struggles. You've got to go through bad relationships. Yes. And then when you come out at the end, if you can get back to that center fast. Yes. Nothing seems like a problem. Mm. You have a better perspective. And for me, for me, you know, when you talk about your childhood mm. and your assaults and all that, for yes. me, my greatest impact was my dad. Yes. Right? Yes. And what I've done was I said, Are you, it's time to aim up, stand up, and, and show up mm. and be the person that you were afraid to be. Your dad instilled this. He did. He wow. did without without doing it. Without knowing. Without yeah. knowing. Without knowing. Because I, I had to get perspective. Because he was fast. like that. He was like that. 100%, man. Yeah. He knew who he was. And that's how they teach you, don't but they? Not they, by but, talking but, to you. They don't know. By, hardly by you watching words, them. man. And, yeah. and, and what I had to do at that moment. Makes sense. Like, and it was in an instant. Mm. It was in an instant. Mm. It was like, that was it. Mm. You know, and, and people thought, like, the, you know, he's done so well so far. Yes. It wasn't that I done well. It was like, how can I have the processes in place mm. if I'm to be the true self and I'm to be that person, that 10 year old. I'll, I'll go back to this story. Last time I was talking about this 10 year old. Mm. My brother had a gym set in our bedroom, two bedroom apartment, three brothers living in one bedroom. Yes. He had a gym set in there. I don't know how the fuck he got that gym set in there, right? <laughs> got it was it. in East Lakes, yeah. right? Rough name. Whatever it takes, rough mate. Rough name. It would have been back then. And he's, had his, he's having his mates in there. I'm mm. eight years old. Right, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm and around that ten year old age, I never forget. I love bodybuilding. Yeah. I watched Arnold at the first time when I was about ten years old. My yes. brother used to get all the video cassettes and all that. Wow! And I never forget when I was ten. I said, "I'm going to be big because I'm watching Arnold. I'm watching. I'm going to be something, yes. right?" And if I look at that ten year old, and then if I look at the twenty year old me and the thirty year old me, mm -hmm. it was hundred percent. I was scared of this forty two year old that I am now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when I look back at that, I go, why was I? When I that's what I wanted to be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if when I look at this, and, and, and you don't have to be famous. You don't have no, to be no, this no, massive no, no, thing no. because you're already a hero. In my eyes, you know what I mean? When I look at your family, your three kids and what you've done, that's what I see, right? Thank you. And people have to know you to see what I see, mm -hmm. right? And when you start really realizing that and you go deeper than you ever have before mm. you realize you're more powerful than you are to yourself mm. because when you got that power for you you can you can help anyone now yes right because yes. you got that state of calmness yes everyone's world could be going haywire but when you got that state of calmness you can bring order to their life mm. and it's mm. and it, that's what happened to me and when you talk about what happened to you if you take strength and you go back there again You've got that. Mm. And with chaos, with mayhem, we can always bring order into our lives because yes. we're always going to get pulled from those two ends. Yes. And that's why, like, I don't want to say to people it's easy. Because, oh, man, because I, like, what, like think about what, what I had to go through to get there. <clears throat> mm. You know, I don't know, like, you know, closing down two gyms and, yes. and, and, and like, that's not easy, man. Mm. The mm. backlash, the, what people are saying. Yep. And I'm that fighter back then, mm. too. Mm. I'm that reactor. Yes. Now, I'm not that reactor. Mm. Um, let me process this. Mm. Let me have a state of calmness, yes. right? But I was that reactor before. Mm. That reactor only affects me, mm. right? I'm only affecting me when I get angry. I'm only affecting me when my tone goes up. Mm. I'm only affecting me. Mm. And when I realized that, especially after what I went through, I say, calm the fuck down, man. Mm. That's to me. Yeah. And then I realized, like, great message. And, and, but, but great when message. I see you, I swear, I'm not lying, I see that. Mm. And I would never know that other part of you. I yeah. would never know that part yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, like, honestly, 
I was so excited to have you here because I'm gonna I'm learning from you. You don't realize that, but you're already teaching me already. Yes. Because I didn't know that about you. Quantum physics, okay? That's why we're here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why we're here. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and that's me- metaphysics, the original metaphysics was the same stuff, but without the science behind yeah, it. Yeah. So quantum physics just put the science behind yeah, yeah. the measure of thought and yeah. energy, the measuring energy 100%. And, and universal law, the way things work. And like attracts like, man. Yes. No matter what. Yes, yes, like, you know, when yes. people go, I'm always attracting these bad people in my life. I'm always getting this bad luck in my life. Mm. Do you know who you are? Mm. Are it's you living your truth, mm. right? It's a frequency. And once you start living that, Things change. Things are still gonna go wrong, man. I'm gonna yes. go out there, and something's gonna happen. Yeah. I just left my dog at home and started pouring, and I'm f- thinking about my dog. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like things yeah. are gonna happen. You know yeah. what I mean? And and in this business, things happen. In your business, things happen. Mm. Oh, very Tell nice me stuff. how you overcome obstacles Ch- and problems. challenges. Um, I, ha- I, I yeah, I had some rippers a couple of weeks ago, and and it depends. I guess um, it's probably different. It's different. Mm. It's different with business challenges. Mm opposed to something like relationship challenges, yeah, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and you know, having having a wife and children yeah. and, and managing your family, that's that's challenging as well. Yeah, yeah, Especially when you come, you know, my wife and I come from different backgrounds. My yeah. wife's beautiful, intelligent, yeah. strong woman. She's yeah. Greek, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and she's very Greek. You yeah. know, she's, she's, she's really... It sounds like the, the Italian stallion Susie. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you know what I'm talking oh, about. No, Enough no, said. No, we don't no, have to no, go no, into said, that. Mate, and, and, stone. Yeah, and I, and I, yeah, exactly. And I, and I come from a very different background, so relationships challenge you. And we love them as well. We're not oh, saying anything bad. No, of course not. Them. Of course yeah, not, because yeah, yeah. they're very good knife throwers. The Greeks, yeah. <laughs> we don't say anything bad. No, but we do. We married them. We yeah, got children. Know, we know. love them more than anything. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but when it comes to business, the challenges, I guess, in business. Um, they're 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 different. They're they're different with business. Um, let's just take for example my new my new casein my yeah. new casein flavors yeah, that yeah. came out. They, the sleeve printers made a mistake with the sleeves. Yeah. Um, yeah. They 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 made on them, this sleeve on the on the big size on the big size. Yeah. That's not too bad. We did these yeah, ones yeah. by hand yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. but they're too big. The sleeves oh, they used okay. the wrong dye. Yeah, yeah. So and they were already eight weeks too late. So oh. I was running out of stock. Yeah. I was late to get the products yeah, to market. Yeah, yeah. It was costing me lots of money because I was out of chocolate, yeah. uh, chocolate honeycomb, yeah, my best selling flavors. So it was yeah, costing yeah, us yeah. heaps. I was looking like an idiot because I kept telling the retailers, <laughs> we've got the new flavors coming next yeah. week, next week. I was yeah. like that for two months. Yeah, yeah. So we finally get them. We couldn't get them on. We're, yeah. we're in oh, manufacture. Wow. So, and then the, the manufacturing plant's been held up yeah. and they're calling me saying, Jonesy, you have gotta call us. These sleeves are not shrinking right. down. They're too big. Yeah. I'm calling the sleeve manufacturers, no one will talk to me. Wow. And I've just spent 35 grand in, in labels and, and no one will call me back. So the hard part is they're the only guys in the country that do this, this that can make a sleeve yeah, this big. Yeah. And when yeah. you go offshore, unless you're doing 100,000 plus yeah. of a single SKU, yeah. it's cost you more, there's no well, price yeah. break. So yeah. I put up with these guys here and, mm-hmm. and, and it was really challenging mm-hmm. um, for a whole host of reasons. Um, and I was just ready to blow a gasket. Mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. The, it's not uncommon. Like you say, I'm calm, and it's nice to hear you say it's easy to get back to calm, because mm-hmm. sometimes it's not that easy, Mets. Mm-hmm. And there are right, many man. days where I'm about to blow a gasket, yeah. and you'll see me and go, I'm next chilled, and he's happy like normal, yeah. and it's like, yeah, but mate, an yeah. hour ago, I was ready to blow a gasket. Yeah. I was ready to blow, blow a gasket, gasket yeah. you know? And it's, how do we overcome those challenges? We do our best to rectify the problem. Yeah, we, yeah. we just look at how can I fix it? Yeah. How can I fix it? Yeah. That's all. Whether it's good, bad, indifferent, how can I fix it? How can I make it work? Yeah, yeah. And that's where my focus lies. And I guess that's as simple as I can make it is, mm. you're looking at go issue, and instead of looking at all the, the bad parts about it and losing money, looking yeah. like an idiot with the retailers, you know, we had advertising ready to go, all of this stuff that, that was impacted yeah, by it. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, how can we fix it? We're just yeah. gonna fix it. Yeah, yeah. And you just gotta do whatever yeah, it takes. Yeah, yeah. So when you said to I me like at the that. start of the like interview, that. you said, what do you do? Whatever it takes, it's actually whatever true. Takes, yeah. You do whatever mm-hmm. it takes. Mm-hmm. And I guess we've always done that. Yeah. I do that with my, bo- I've done that with my bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. I do it with my Arakana. We train in the dark. In the Arakana, it was raining last night. It was yeah. dark, yeah. you know, and I haven't got great eyesight yeah, yeah, in the yeah, dark, yeah. but and I didn't feel like training mats. Yeah. I didn't feel like training at seven o'clock yeah. last night in the dark and the yeah. cold, but, mm-hmm. You, you know what? It's like, I've got to, I've just mm. got to do it. You know, mm. life, 
Body, uh, Buddhism 101, life contains suffering. Mm, so what, yeah, you, what you were saying before about the suffering and the tough mm. stuff, life contains suffering. Mm. It's part of it. Yeah. Life contains stress yeah. and suffering. Mm. But it is how we grow. Yeah. We're not going to see it right at that point in time. Yeah. If you can see it right at that point in time and say, I'm calm and I've got all this stress, but it's making me grow, that doesn't happen. No. You're pulling your hair oh, out, you're yeah. about to blow yeah, a gasket, yeah. you're losing the plot, yeah. but you just, you turn that <laughs> anger into, how can I fix this? Yeah, yeah. How can I fix this? Yeah, I'll kick a couple of asses yeah, maybe, yeah. but how can I fix it and make it work? Right? So this yeah. is, you know, so yeah, we're not centered. We still get pulled that yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But how can I fix it? Sure, how yeah, can I fix it? it? Yeah. You know, and I always, you know what, with that suffering and with these stresses, just like bodybuilding, it's so metaphorical. And this is one of the things I love about mm. the Greeks. You know, everything with the Greek culture is metaphorical. Yeah. When you have a baby, the Greeks will bring you sweets yeah, yeah, because yeah. they want the baby to have a sweet life. Yeah. So there's all these metaphorical yeah, yeah. offerings and rituals, I yeah. guess, yeah. that the Greeks have. And I love that because I am very metaphorical about my bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stress that we put in our muscles in the gym upstairs mm. here, you know, and, and again, mm. it's probably the most beautiful facility in the country is yeah. Titan Fitness here. Um, <laughs> That stress that we put on the chest when we're doing yeah. bench press, when we're doing fly, when we're doing all those great machines that you have for the chest, mm. when we're putting stress on those muscles, they respond by growing and getting mm. stronger. Yeah. So stress causes growth. Yes. We know this yes. is bodybuilders. 100%. We know with bodybuilders, in order to succeed in bodybuilding, we must fail in the gym set mm. after set. We must go to a complete muscular failure yeah. for optimal growth. Yeah. Yeah. So we must fail in order to mm. succeed. The great Justin Wessels, that's one of his sayings. Yeah, yeah. So this stress that we yeah. get, you know, the, yeah. the, the stress that we get mm. and that we put on ourselves, these issues, these challenges mm. that we give ourselves, they cause growth. Yeah, 100%. We won't see it in the moment, 100%. but we'll look back on it and go that, you know, it was essential 100%. and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for mm. those challenges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. I'm grateful for them. And you brought up a beautiful point there, gratitude. Oh, like number one. On the two ends, right? Rule number Whether one. Whether it's positive or negative, Rule number be grateful one. for the two ends as it's, you're teaching you something. Yes. When you talked about stress, the greatest pain in my life created the greatest impact. Yes, exactly. Okay? Yes. So pain can yes, create impact. You. It doesn't mean yes. you have to live in pain all the time. No. But it's just but like it's overtraining. Too 100%. much will cause burnout. Yeah, 100%. Too much causes burnout. Too much is overtraining. Totally agree with that. And, mm. and training will cause an element of stress. And it's how you bring that stress to center. Yes. And it's how you get the most out of it. When Arnold talks about the pump and how euphoric it is. Yes. So you take the good points of that pain, you take the good points of that yes, stress yeah, and you yeah. bring it back to the center, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and this is Robin's not, 101, pain and pleasure. Is it? Pain and pleasure, there you go, Yeah, yeah, yeah that's hu right. Humans, we make decisions and we're motivated yeah. by- The two ends. To, by the two ends, our need to run away from pain yeah. and run towards pleasure. pleasure yeah, 100%. That's why. That's how we make our decisions generally. 100%. Because we, we, we're lazy, we're sloth. We, if we yeah. don't work, work on ourselves, yeah, yeah. we're just running from pain constantly so, yeah. and running towards pleasure. Yeah. But it's in the pain that we get the lessons. And we can lose ourselves in the two ends too. We, we can, can have too much course. pleasure. It's, yes. And then we can be suffering in pain. Yes. But that's why I say to people, experience and life experience like we've had, yeah. we can distinguish the two and how they have beauty in both. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's what I try and say to people. Mm -hmm. and. The biggest thing I love about the podcast, and I'm still learning so much. Just when we talk, I'm learning. Yeah, and that's what I love. That's likewise. what I love the most. Yeah, you know likewise. I mean? But They're coming back to but, but 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 what I love the most is like how much like from the time I met you and where you are and your companies and your kids are and your families. Yes. When I met you, you didn't have a kid. No, correct. You know what I mean? Correct. Yes. And, and yeah. When I look at how probably the first time is when you judged me in the in the 2009 IFBB show. Yeah, I yeah, think. I did. Yeah, 100. percent Yeah, mm. yeah. I remember mm. when Gary was uh, the photographer. Gary Phillips. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They came here and did photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, time. Yeah, four, but I met you before you built this. I, I know. You when when you were rocked up, up yeah, 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 caught up and went to the shopping center for coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how times. Just flies, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Mets? It just flies, and this is what I say to people: is like these moments right now this is what i'm most grateful for and you talk about you know when you're talking about stress right and yes. you talk about before you came I, I stacked my whole day up i done five one-on-ones with my team oh excellent and when you do one-on-ones man it it's, it's you're given everything yes like absolutely everything in the yes. yes and i said to myself i'm gonna do this 
so I'm primed for this, mm, right? Great. Because I'm going to come in here and give it everything. And I said to When are you doing a one-on-one? You know what, what, what are you, what are you, what are you doing when you're doing a one-on-one? What are you doing? Exactly what we're talking what you, about. What are you doing? Let's find who you are. Let's make you better. Wow, do you? Let's, you let's, coach them personally. I coach them. So, so what I do is I go, Nick, this is who you are. Let's keep refining that every day. Mm. Right? Wow. I don't have to keep finding who you are. Wow. Let's just refine that. Mm. Let's keep sculpting that you know how, you know as bodybuilders let's sculpt yes. you yes. to become the better version of you i don't want nick to change mm. i want nick to become better yes and and i okay, go we're going to become better in service we're going to become better in helping one another yes we're going to become better in going i've got your back yes because you know when i got your back you got my back yes because when you fall i'm there you know I mean? and, and in life we want to we want to feel safe mm. as well true and you know, I'm reading a book, The Best Teams Men at the Moment. Okay. And it goes through um, millennials, Gen Y, and baby boomers. Yes. And they're all completely different. Mm. And it's funny, when I had this impact with my dad, I went straight into learning. A lot about health, mm. a lot about environment, um, and also a lot about understanding and learning about people. Mm. And it was funny, people go, how do, would you, how can, how do you do that? I go, mate, I needed to learn how to save my dad. Right, I needed to learn. I needed to learn how to save me. Mm. I needed to learn how to be the, a better version of me in that moment. Mm, yes. And how am I going to yes. handle? You know what I mean? Like yes, yes. I was, and <clears throat> having that perspective is extremely hard. And mm. I thank God. Mm. Right. Mm. I thank a power mm. that's helped me go find something within this. And I'm telling you, there was a lot of support along the way, mm. like extreme support. I think I was ready to have that support. Yes. Because you need it. Yes. And and, and I'm, honestly, it, it was the best thing for me. And the biggest thing was, Nick, I was able to talk about it. I was able to do a podcast yeah, about it. Yeah, wow. I was, wow. what I done was I expressed everything mm. that was in me. Mm. So when we talk about visceral connection and we talk about who you are, when you can allow that out. Yes. And not worry about the judgment or what anyone thinks. Yes. It actually helped everyone else around I me. Bet, I bet it did. And it helped me. It shows your humanness. It when I came back humanness. into work and I was breaking down, my team was there for me. Mm. And I said, I'm going to be there for each and every one of them. Mm. And like l- last week, I didn't do as many one-on-ones because mm-hmm. I was knocked out from the week before. Yes. And I spent more time with members and I, went, and I took a member out for dinner. Just, just right. Cu- you know, act right. of kindness, right? Wow. Just wow. messaged him and... He, he doesn't have any friends and I wanted to be his friend and I just done that yeah. and I said I'm going to do these little things I'm going to have these little moments in my life and I'm going to learn from those moments mm. and what it does it gives me perspective and gives me humility yeah. you know what I mean yes. and, and we lose ourselves within that yes. and sometimes the greatest motivation for me is family mm. and, I, and I go how can I utilize that in everything that I do how can I be true to that if I'm saying time of fitness is family how can I be really really true to that and still be true to my family as well mm. and so when I sit down with my team man, I give them absolutely everything mm. like I, I give so much energy out mm. and I do that because I feel good I can see them when I see their faces light up yeah from the week before this asking them the same question okay this is working this feels good because they feel good yes and then they can serve so when I live in service mm. and you live in service but when I can really really recognize that yes and really go that lady's put her blinker on to get in front of me let her in Slow right down, let that lady in. Yes. Let that guy in. Yes. If someone beeps, you just wave at him. Yes. Like the simplest, yes. simplest yeah. things, right? Yep. And it, Which it, are hard to do. But I've They're become so much more aware of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I do as Would well? Would you now? say awareness is maybe three quarters of it? You know what? Awareness, the detachment. But what I do, I, I detach myself from me right detachment. now. Yes. I'm watching myself right here. Mm-hmm. I'm watching myself for Facebook. Is yes. Are they getting something amazing right here? Is this. Is this one of my best performances to date? Because I'm not going to watch this again, mm. and I'm not going to think about it. Yeah. Because I want to serve more and give more. Yes. Right. Yes. I don't watch my. I don't there. like watching myself. It's funny. I don't either. I'm the same. You know why? It's funny. I don't. And I heard someone say, I don't know if it was Jules, one of the team members told me that that what what some person when they come off set, I was Brad. Someone's told me about Brad Fittler. Right. He doesn't like watching himself because he likes giving his best performance and then going to the next set, yes. to the next set. And if, if, that's his, if that's who he is, 
and he likes he's a larrikin he has likes having a laugh yes and he judges himself he doesn't want to lose that person that he is yes okay, okay. and when i when i heard that i go i don't want to watch myself because i'm in that service area yeah i want to still be me <clears throat> yes i don't want to copy anyone but i want to go i acknowledge that i like that i learned that off him yes but I want to stay true to me within that. And, sure. and, and that makes me get better. That mm. refines me. And all I say to my team, let's refine who you are. Mm. Let's refine you because you're going to get pulled from these two ends. Let's keep refining. And that, that's what I just focus on. I keep it so simple, as simple as I can. Yes. And I just try and make it so good for them. So when they leave, they go, oh, that's my fuel for the day. That's my fuel. I can't wait to see Mets. Mm. And that's, and I've never taken that approach before. Mm. And it seems like everything's flowing better. And I'm, I'm, look, things are going to happen, man. It's still going to happen. Of course, that's you know? life. That's life. Like you there guarantee was, that. At, I think guarantee. it was nine o'clock the other night. <clears throat> rain like this. When we first took over, I'm running up four floors of stairs, getting the leak. There's a leak coming out nine o'clock. Susie so goes, there's a leak. I go, fuck. Yeah. Go, Stay calm, go to bed. <laughs> right? And then she comes in the morning, it's not there. Get another message, it's there. Go, Stay calm. And then Tina's going, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. yeah. Stay calm, Mets. Yeah. Stay calm. Stay under so I went there, I rang my roof guy, he came, he goes, easy, Mets, I'll fix it tomorrow the other day. Best Done. Thing. Done. Best Finished, thing. you know yeah. what I mean? Best thing. And those things will happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those Definitely. things will happen. Definitely. Let's go on back to you. Three kids. Yes. Yes. Right? The love of my life. From from the single guy that you were married to, Angela Jones, then. Yes. Right? Well, it was a bit, uh, surname was different before that, obviously. Yes. Yes. Chugos. You've got the free kids now. Yeah. How does that change your life? Um, just, just massively. It's like I have a, it's like I have a new life, you know, um, and, and, and the best life, the best mm. one I could have hoped for. Mm. And I, you know, it wasn't something that I was consciously, I want to settle down and get married and have three children. It wasn't like a conscious for me. It was, you know, it was. I, I guess everything was a process, and I, I was. Um, and the, I guess the good thing, a, a good thing for me is I was 40 when we had Electra, our mm. first daughter. Mm. So she, she's turning seven in um, in a couple of weeks time, mm. Electra. So wow, yeah. I was 40 when we had our first. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that I did wait that long because mm. I, at 30 Mets, I was still traveling the world, yeah, yeah. doing bodybuilding, trying to win the Mr. Universe yeah. and the Mr. World title. Mm. And I was very selfish and it was all about me and I still party a couple of times a mm. year and, mm. and and ride Harleys on the weekends and carry on with the boys. And mm. um, yeah, so so having children and settling down with Angela um, was, I don't know, it, it gives you, it, you, it's hard to explain it. I, I have friends that are about to have their first child, and and it, it's your child is your DNA. They're your heart. It's like you, it's like you wave the white flag and give up because your your heart your heart's mm. gone. Mm. That your heart lives there now mm. in yeah. that little person, you know. Yeah. And it's uh, it's it's amazing. It's beautiful that the the whole process of, of um, the birth of your first or any child. You can't put it into words. Yeah. You can't put the emotions yeah. into words. But it, it's a unique experience that you cannot describe. Um, it's hard. Mm. The first year of having babies, it's hard. Mm. It's oh, still yeah. hard. Wow. So yeah, it's, I remember. it's hard. I remember, man. Yeah, it's hard. The first um, Electra and then uh, a couple of years later was April Fool's Day. And we were living in South Coogee here, yeah, not far. Yeah. We were going for a walk. Yeah. It was April Fool's Day. We had Electra in the, in the pram. Yeah. She wasn't even a year old. And it was tough. Mm. It was tough financially because I was rebuilding Gentech yeah, after yeah. a failed gym oh, business in yeah, Adelaide yeah. and a bad partnership. Yeah. So it was really tough when I moved to Sydney. Financially, it was tough. I was rebuilding Gentech. Um, you know, I, uh, Angela was about to have our mm. first child. We were going down to one wage in an expensive city yeah. like Sydney. Yeah. And it was a really tough time, mm. Mets. It was really tough. So you had these beautiful, incredible emotions. Yeah. And you had these financial challenges, mm. relationship challenges, new baby challenges, all on sleep deprivation. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, you remember yeah. that. So <laughs> it's as beautiful and yeah. as incredible as, as it is, that first 12 months, it's hard. Mm. And then it was it was April Fool's Day and Ange, we're walking along, go, Ange goes, I've got something to tell you. Mm. I said, what's that? She goes, and, and I couldn't think of anything worse than having another <laughs> child because I was so, I was battling mess. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, I'm pregnant. Yeah. And I went, my heart sang and I went, oh no. And then I was like, oh, 
unbelievable. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. More love. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to have another heart. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to actually get another heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And it was April Fool's Day. Yeah. She goes, April Fool's. Yeah. And I'm oh, like, oh, bloody wow. hell. And then, about a week later, sure enough, she's pregnant. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, so yeah. she was probably pregnant when she was making the joke. Joke, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So every time I've had a child, and then, you know, the two girls was enough. We got Electra and Mariah, they're now nearly seven and five. And, and that was enough. And, and I was rebuilding Gentech, and Gentech was becoming more successful. Yeah. And I bought our first family home, yeah. first residential property I, yeah. I bought in my yeah. life. Yeah. It was at 43 years yeah. of age, yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 Because we had our second child coming, I had to get a home. Yeah. Of course, I couldn't afford one around Coogee, so I went southwest to Moorbank. Yeah. It was a great family home, yeah. though, yeah. a beautiful home, yeah. just, just a... Um, an average area, not yeah. such a good area. Great yeah. street, great neighbors. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I couldn't imagine myself 10 years ago as a family man living in suburbia. I couldn't imagine yeah. it with, I was bodybuilding, I was traveling the world, I was riding Harleys, I was carrying on. I couldn't imagine it. Yet, you know, every time I'd have a baby, it was like, I got another mm. heart. There was, the love would double. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The love would double. So all of the love and all of the, the laughter and the happiness yeah. doubles. But then the screaming doubles and the challenges oh, double yeah, too, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, um, I totally agree with right? that, mate, so, 100%. And, but again, like anything, anything that's challenging mm. and, and, you know, a relationship, I, I meet a couple that have their 40th wedding mm. anniversary and I, I am just like bowing down yeah. to them saying, yeah. well done, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. tell me, that's yeah. an achievement, tell me the secret, secret yeah, tell yeah. me the secret yeah. because that's, it's easier to leave when times get tough. Yeah. That's the easy route to yeah, leave, yeah, right? Yeah, That's the easy route. Yeah, it's yeah. tougher to stay and yeah, work, work and yeah, work. work. And it takes work mm -hmm. and it's challenging. Mm -hmm. But again, the most challenging things are the most rewarding. How rewarding is it having yeah. children? 100%. How, you know, how, 100%. Yeah. It's the best thing. Like, if you have a look at what kids do for you, as opposed to what life is without it, you went from self-absorbed mm, yes. to selfless. Yes, correct. right. You have to be selfless. And when you become self-absorbed, you can never make yourself happy. No, correct. Right. That's right. And it's in the service of others. Mm, of course. So when you had your kids, mm. you became, you had more heart. Yes. You became more of a person. Yes. But you re realize that a lot of people don't really have that realization. No, no. But you were able to do that. Yeah. And it's what what's fascinating about it is. 40 is really when a male becomes their true self, I believe. Yeah, you think so? For me, for me, mm, for me yeah. as well. Like, like even though my late 30s were good, I just believe, I just, for me, like for, for how I am as a husband, mm. because I look at that as well, because I've become a better husband. Yes. I became a better father. Yes. I wasn't the best. Yes. Because I was married a lot earlier, I mean, mm. at yeah. I was 25. Yeah, I can't relate to that. I was 25, man. Mm. and. and that's tough, man. No kidding. Me that's, at 25, I couldn't. I, I wasn't, I was, you know what? I was so fortunate. I was lucky to marry my wife. Yes. I was so, so lucky that she stayed with me. Yes. And and you talk about, you know, challenges. Yes. You talk about, you know, um, being the right man. Yes. How can a 25 year old man be right? Honestly, we're talking about forty. You've still got so many mistakes yeah, to make, man, yeah. and you've got so, some real. So I was, I was lucky. I was fortunate that was my wife was great, and my mum, my mum was on my back. You know what I mean? To be, to be good, like she was tough, man. Yeah, I got you know so much, you know, gratitude and, and, and thankfulness towards the woman that she was. Mm. You know, backing my wife up and not me because yes. that mattered a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and obviously my brothers, man, like. That was solid in, yep. in, 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 in that as well because I was too young, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I think, you know, like we said before, that that uh, solicitor, that lawyer, or, the, or that person that was helping you, you had a good heart. Yes, yes, and yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, the references I got when I, I went to I, court. I think I, I'm, I'm pretty sure my wife knew I had a, had a good heart. Yes. And my mum, obviously, being my mum, my mum's always going to back you no up. No matter what. <laughs> and, then that, you know, the, and I'll talk about this resilience of mums. Mm. Like, they're special human beings, aren't they? Mm. Like, they will never leave. Mm. But for a male... Some do, Matt. I know, some, some do, do, I know, but mate. I'm saying more, I know some do, 100%, I've seen like it Like you're too. saying, some I've people don't stories. get this heart thing, they, they don't, don't they, they don't, some they people, don't forget some, it, some people don't yeah, get they the don't parenthood, get it. they don't get it, yeah, some yeah. people don't get that, yeah, you get mums that don't yeah. completely, utterly fall in love with their children. Yeah, man, I, I, 
I find it so hard, hard to understand, understand that. Yes. I find it so hard. Yes. But we live in a world where it's so tough as yes. well. Yes. And, and then sometimes I do understand that, you know what I mean, as well, on the two ends. In desperate times. Desperate times. And, and that's why, like, you know, having you on here, man, it's been so cool. Mm. You know, yeah. I mean, like talking about the real... Real stuff. The real stuff. Real you know stuff, what I mean? yeah. The stuff that Jeff said's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, it ain't easy, mate. It's not this easy. Is, it's not he, easy. He, no, he'll be the first to tell you it's not easy. He'll it's be the not, first but, to but, tell but, you. But even the, the guy that's not married, that's not easy. No. He's searching for that. He's yeah. longing for that. Yes. And and sometimes we go, I wish I still had a bit of the time. But you know, like, I don't know about you, but I know me... When the house is quiet, I mean, where's the fucking noise? Where's the noise? noise? Yeah, 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 exactly. That's that funny, noise, isn't it? You know yeah, I mean? it's funny. And, and then sometimes terribly. you need that, 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 that piece. That piece, yeah. That piece yeah. so we can find ourselves. And but you that's don't seem to need much of it now. You don't no, seem to need yes. as much of it. You get back to that centre yeah, pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, you set, man. You, you, get you back do, you quick. do. Nick, it's been... How long have we been going for? Well, it could be going on for hours with Nick, honestly. We could... we could Just under an hour? We could No worries, Nick. I mean, Nick... Where can people find you? Where can they reach out to you? Because man, you've got an amazing story. You've definitely helped a lot of people. I've seen you do public speaking. You're amazing at, at seminars. Um, you're on Facebook Live with Jeff once yes, a week. You're going to yes. start doing your own podcast. Well, yeah, that's the thing. The, I the think whole... you should. I honestly yeah, think you should. Really, that... I think you should, Nick, because yeah. you've got too much good information. Yeah. You've got too much of a good story. You've, you've done absolutely everything. You're a family man. People need to hear your story, man. Yeah, thanks, man. It's, 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 it's one of those things, again, I guess it's coming organically. The Facebook Lives yeah. have started organically. Yeah, and due yeah. to that, we, we're looking at, we'll create a podcast yeah, yeah. from the Facebook Live. Yeah. And you know what? I'm surrounded by so many special people mm. like yourself. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm surrounded by so many special people that I could get on and talk to. Yeah, yeah. So many. And again, because... It's funny how your friends and, and uh, people you surround yourself with, they've got the they they've got something about them mm. that inspires you. Mm. They've all got something yeah. about them that inspires yeah. me. And there's so many good people around mm. me like that. I've got access to some great people, all with good yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah. All with a good message. You know a lot of people, man. Yeah, you all that struggle. We all struggle every yeah, day. Yeah. And you know, for anyone to look at them and think, he's got it worked out, he's got it set. Mm. It's just you never you've never got it sorted. No, never. You know, bodybuilding never. teaches that in the gym. Martial arts mm. teaches me mm. that now, Mitch. You know, my my instructors um, they are weapons, these guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just wouldn't want to get on the bad side of them, but they're not the kind of guys to go bashing people in yeah, the street. Yeah. It would be the opposite. Yeah. It would be the opposite. But I, you know, and then I look at them and go, wow, if I could be that good at Arakan and I could move the way Richie moves. Mm -hmm. Richie Burkett, I've never seen a human being move the way so this guy moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of fighters, yeah. you know, I've done some kickboxing, yeah. some boxing when I was very young, yeah, some yeah, Muay Thai. Yeah. The way this guy moves, and I'm like, wow, if I could move like that. And I start falling into that trap, that's I'd right. be yeah, set. Yeah, you yeah. know, so the worst thing is to compare yourself with yeah, anyone. Yeah. But then when you speak to that person, Richie will say, Nick, I get frustrated all the time. Mm. I get frustrated with, with, I get frustrated all the yeah. time. It's like, oh, it's so good to so know. Good. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, matter how yeah, good yeah. you think someone's doing and how yeah, yeah. on top of it you think they are, they still have challenges daily. Yeah, yeah. They may have bigger and harder challenges than what you have mm -hmm. because they've got so many more children, because they live in a bigger house yeah, with yeah, more yeah, bills, yeah. because they've got yeah. more cars, because 100%. they've got a business with with 50 staff, not three or four staff yeah. like myself. Yeah. You know, and, and it's it's um, it's one of those things. So, you have so perspective. Yeah, perspective. you have perspective. But the whole thing is the story is ongoing. Yeah. The story is ongoing. Yeah. So I like the idea of, of, the, of the podcast. I like the idea of the Facebook Lives. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess, you know, our Gentech Facebook page is where people can find yeah, me yeah. and I jump and do the lives yeah. pretty much once a week with Jeffro because yeah, yeah, again, Jeffro. Jeffro's got, he's so doing cool, such mate. good work, mate. He's I'll doing, see, mate. So good. Yeah, yeah, this Jowett method that he's created yeah. and he's the looking coaching, good too, man. it looks great it at looks the moment. Good, I wind yeah. him up all the time because he's got yeah. this jawline Jeffro, now. I hope you're watching this, man. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> <laughs> he looks good, man. He's, <laughs> he's doing great. So again, it's... um. You know what, I reckon there's something in this, and, and my social media guys at Gentech, they tell me they really want me to write a book at yeah, some yeah, stage, yeah, and, yeah. and it's and it's the, um, it's really, I almost call it the corporate athlete, yeah, yeah. the corporate athlete, because we've got a big workload on, we've got businesses to run, yeah. we've got staff to communicate with, we've got new products to create or new services to provide, and we, we've always got to continue yeah. to evolve and grow. Yeah. So. 
To be able to do that in the current competitive environment mm. of every industry, mm. I don't care what industry you're in, it's yeah, competitive. It's competitive. Yeah. I don't care what sport you're in, it's competitive. Yeah. You have to continually evolve and grow yeah. if you're going to you grow. You know, you've got to be nimble. You, 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 yeah. you look at McDonald's these days yeah. with their McCafe and their healthy the gourmet change. burgers. Yeah. And, mate, if they're nimble at mm. their size, yeah. mate, for you and I to be nimble with yeah. our businesses and to yeah. not adapt, we've got no excuse. 100%. So it's this ongoing thing, but to be able to do that, We've got to be sharp. We've got to have energy. We've mm. got to be strong. We've mm. got to stay positive. We've got yeah. to be motivated. Mm. We've got to be athletes. We've mm. got to be these corporate athletes. Mm. And there's yeah. a lot to it. There's mm. there's the mental stuff. 100%. There's the physical training. You know, and the mental stuff's like the physical yeah. training. If you don't keep conditioning this daily yeah. and train it daily, 100%. just like muscles, it will start to atrophy. 100%. So don't think you're going to read a few motivational books and, and books on planning and you're going to be set. Yeah. It's daily exercise for yeah. the brain. Yeah. It's daily exercise for the muscles. It's feeding your body for performance, mm -hmm. whether it be in the gym or whether it be yeah. in a conversation like this. I, I had about five grams of tyrosine with vitamin B before I came. Shit, you got to me. increase dopamine. So you got me. Yeah, I'll charge you. Yeah, don't test me. I'll test positive for dopamine. You, you sell, you sell tyrosine. tyrosine. I love tyrosine. I with love, B12. I love tyrosine. I, I mix it with a Barocca. I love my Barocca. I always no, order my, it. Jules, yeah, can you B6, make sure we B6, get tyrosine? Yeah, B6 and tyrosine, Jules. That could be my, that could be my edge on my next podcast. Yeah, I'm telling you, B6 <laughs> and tyrosine. B6, B6 and, and tyrosine. tyrosine. So get a Barocca, mm. throw some tyrosine mm. in five grams, mm. and Mets, you'll be switched on. I'm telling you, we switched on. Nick, I'm, think, I'm thinking out loud right now. I think we're going to do seminars together. Corporate athlete. We're going to do the seminars corporate together. Corporate athlete. Because the, the corporates, Matt, so I look at it, you know, with no disrespect to times, so I'm not here. I train yeah. at City Gym. Yeah, yeah. If I train in a commercial gym, mm. it, and it's only the days I'm in the yeah. city seeing clients, otherwise yeah. I train in my yeah, own yeah. office gym. Yeah. I've got a gym in my yeah, office yeah, these yeah, days, I know, right? I know. Yeah, so, so I train I'd love there. I'm not going to have a workout, but I see what you're lifting. Come and try. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that strong these days, man. I'm fast, though. I'm fast now. I'm fast and flexible. But I see all these corporates training in some of these gyms in the city, this one yeah. in particular, and these corporates, um, you know, you'll get guys like, I don't mind saying, I'm sure you wouldn't mind Alex Perry, yeah. you know, top designer. Alex probably works 12 hours yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah. You know, Al Alex is married, so he's, he's got multiple of businesses. You see um, some of the top um, sports athletes training yeah. in there. You see, yeah. um, you see some investment bankers yeah, training yeah, in there. Yeah, you yeah. see some TV celebrities training in there. You see such a yeah, big yeah. walk of life training in there. Yeah. But they train like athletes, they train like bodybuilders, mm. their nutrition's on point. I guess they work out very quickly mm. that the poor nutrition, the late nights, the corporate dinners, the alcohol, the, the, the four hours of sleep mm. per night, the high levels of stress, not sustainable folks. 100%. If you're one of those that's working yourself into the ground, like, and for what? For what, you've got family at home, you've got children at home, for what? Yeah. But if you're like, it's not sustainable to live that old school corporate mm. life. Mm. We've got to be on, we've oh, got to be on yeah. now, mate. We've yeah, got to, yeah. we have to feed ourselves yeah. like athletes. We have to perform yeah. Yeah. like corporate now athletes. Now I'm laughing right now because I'm thinking of a tyrosine. You're thinking of the tyrosine, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're thinking of that. Yeah, and you're thinking about doing some corporate seminars. There, there's so much 100%, there. because we've got heaps of corporates in here. Right, so you see and, what and, I'm and, talking and about. I'm telling you, like, I get a lot of them on here as well. Yes. So, so they love what, what we're doing, what we're about mm. as well. And they love that information. They watch everything and, and they get excited about what I'm doing here as Great well. Mates. And they want to be involved in more. They, mm. want to, they want to be able to belong to this group where they can get fit with people that have been in industry for a long time, that understand it, that yes. understand nutrition, that understand gut health, that yes. understand the whole mindset. Like, yes. to bring the whole thing together, if that's not happening at scale, yes. there's bits of it here and there. Yes. And that's been one of my things that I've always wanted to do. But knowing that you want to do that as well, mm. I think I think there's something there, man, for, for, for what we can do together. Yeah, man. I do. Yeah, we, we we think alike. We're both family men. Yeah, um, we've probably had similar paths. You know what I mean? And and we've got amazing stories. You know mm. what I mean? And then sharing those stories and helping people and serving people, that's that's our mantra, man. That's yeah. our ethos. You know? it is. And I think I think like having you here today is it's helped me a lot. You know, I'm gonna go to the next Likewise. meeting. I'm Likewise. pumped up. Yeah, great. You know I mean? great, 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 great. One thirty, but I'm pumped up, Nick. Great, Nick. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I just want to say one more thing before we end it. Yes. When I was doing my one on with, with Belle before and she's seen you come in and I said, you're going to be on the podcast. She said, you're such a nice guy and you don't even know her. 
That's oh, how. But that's a, I think that's I met a, her for the first time. But that's the kind of impact you make, not from here, but from before she's met you before, oh. and she said you were such a nice guy. Ah, oh. do you know what I mean? And so that, they, they know the I'm good talking. side, Mets. They don't know the day. I know. <laughs> the, the, the dark side. The both sides. <laughs> God bless her. But Nick, thanks again, thanks, guys. We got Jet Tech here. We got Jet Tech. Um, it's an amazing product. Nick's an amazing guy, and I always bring people on the program that I've known, that I trust, that are loyal. And I've got his product here because I know it works. And I just want to thank you again, Nick. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Thanks, folks. See ya.